So hello everyone. Today I'm going to share my challenges and learnings from building the gRPC Python async I/O stack. So today we are going to cover four topics. The first is about Python's asynchronous story. The second is about the collaboration between gRPC team and the community. Third is about some highlights of the async I/O API. And finally, some implementation challenges I I personally encountered. So for many of you may know, um, gRPC has a lot of stacks. We support 14 different languages, and some of them even have more than one implementations. And some implementations share a majority of code paths, but some of them are very different uh, programming paradigm. So why do we want to build a new stack uh, if there are already many stacks existed? Is this is because um, Python's fragmented asynchronous story. And as you may know, Python has many different uh, asynchronous libraries, for example, like Gvent, Twisted, Tornado, and they can split into uh, two different kinds. The first kind is they do monkey patching, they patch all the standard libraries of Python. And the second one is providing an alternative event loop so you can register your own coroutine into it. But the problem is, if you are using more than one asynchronous library, it may very likely to cause a deadlock. And each one of them have many different uh, programming paradigm. So it's very hard to switch from one to the other. Luckily, the Python maintainers also realize this is a problem. And they de so they developed the official asynchronous library, which is named async.io. And it introduces key the new keywords async and await, just like JavaScript and C sharp. And all, and all the asynchronous libraries we saw before, they are trying to be compatible with this new official asynchronous library. And on the right side is a short snippet showing how to build, uh, how to open up a TCP connection and how to read write from it using the async I using the async IO semantic. Well, um, all of this is great. And one of our, our gRPC team member posted a comment saying, we are going to build this thing. And this comment got, is, the mo is one of the most upvoted comment in entire gRPC repo. However, despite there is a high demand uh, and all those benefits we talk about, it never happened due to um, lack of engineering resources. So, it, so the async IO API never got prioritized before a helping hand appeared. So an engineer named Paul Frixis, and he was from Skyscanner. He sent us an email saying, okay, now, we have, now uh, I had built a Proof, proof of concept of a gRPC async IO native driver. And he's asking for collaboration from the gRPC team. And after our first meeting, they, they promised to contribute four part-time suites, and which solved, which gives the project all the engineering resources it needed, and then we can get finally get started. And as time goes by, more and more companies join the effort including some engineers from Dropbox and some from Uber and many other community members. They're not only contributing to code, but also to the design itself and commenting about the directions and commenting about the directions. So the, as you can see, there are many comments on the design doc, on the design doc itself and on other threads. All the discussions are with code and alternatives, so it might not be as hard to read as, uh, as expect, expected. So here I want to say thank you to all the people who have contributed to this project. Um, I know this may sound like an ending, but I'm just getting started. Uh, so next, let me try to sell the async IO API through some of its highlights. The async API was tailored to the async IO semantic, and it has redesigned the entire public interface. It includes 23 new um, public classes, 64 methods of functions. All the IO operations now is labeled with async, 
and it's not type annotated, so it's more friendly to new project to larger projects. On the right side is a short example about how to use the async IO API. As you can see, um, we can use async await to create a channel and use await to wait for an RPC to finish. On the lower part, um, you can define uh, asynchronous method handler through an async define. And finally, you can start a server in an asynchronous way. It, only, it not only introduced gRPC Python into the async IO world, it also solved other problems. For example, the thread exhaustion issue. So in current API, if you are trying to uh, build a if you're trying to initialize a gRPC server, you have to provide a threadable executor, which currently requires you to specify a maximum worker. However, if the worker number is limited, there might be a thread exhaustion issue because each RPC consumes at least one thread. And if you have 10 long running streaming RPC or you have 10 slow unit RPC, which means the entire server will deadlock. Okay. Um, luckily, this problem was, would, would be no longer existed with async IO API. And moreover, we're trying to unify the core entrance for the, on the client side. Currently, there are three ways to call to invoke an RPC. You can invoke it directly, invoke it with a uh, with call uh, method, invoke it with a future method. It creates uh, some confusion for our users about how to use it and when to use it. Well, in the new API, there is, is only one unir, uh, unified way to invoke it. Secondly, it's about the streaming calls. So in current API, as you can see, um, there are a lot of boilerplate. If you are trying to send a message depending on the response you receive from the server. And the sending logic is before the invocation of the RPC, and the receiving logic is down below. So you have this a uh, conflict of, reach, uh, of logic flow here. Well, on the other hand, on the new async API, we're trying to introduce a read-write. So you can read-write from a stream, just like um, many other gRPC languages design. And, but you can also use a very Pythonic way of try, trying to iterate through each response in an RPC. And finally, this part may get into a little bit uh, technical. During building this, uh, during building this async IO API, we encountered some challenge. The first one is about the non-blocking IO itself. The so if you if an application trying to run any logic that is blocking. For example, uh, reading a file or writing to a web, uh, network socket, it might deadlock the entire event loop. And here, and luckily, here is how a gRPC core organizes its IO operations. So it has an IO manager inside the G, uh, gRPC core, and it abstract all the lower uh, the the system level IO operations into several categories and allows people to to provide their own. So our solution is that we can let the IO manager calling back into the Python space, calling back, sorry, my screen just locked. Um, calling into the, the custom IO manager. And however, this method it was deprecated and not recommended to use anymore. So do not follow this pattern. So despite the, the last solution that is working, it may deadlock if the application is trying to fork or using multiple event loop or using multiple threads running an RPC. The root cause is because um, the Python 3 engines. So on the right side is a diagram showing how this problem occurred. In thread A, a Python application is trying to invoke a gRPC core method. And the gRPC core acquired a certain mutex and calling back into Python space. However, the Python space required a gear, the, the global interpreter log. And on the right side, but however, it, it cannot do so because Thread B already acquired the gear. 
And but however, but the strategy can doesn't want to yield the gill because um because it it was trying to call another gRPC call API which requires the mutex X again. So it enters into a deadlock. The solution is easy, which is uh, posting a polar thread in in the, as a middleman, which invokes the gRPC core API to fetch the events from the gRPC core space, and then sending the events to the async IO event loop, saying, "Hey, this is a there is a IO events. For example, a new message arrived or a DNS result resolution succeed succeed." In this way, we, we keep the Python objects in the Python space, and there's no longer any um, deadlock issues. However, you introduce a performance issue regression, which means, uh, which as many of you may know, um, because of the existence of deal, more threading basically means more lock contention. Lower, in the lower part, there is a latency distribution, which means uh, if the latency, oh, in the lower part is a latency distribution, which means, um, so the, which shows the more, the more thread you're using, the higher the latency will be. Let's take another look at the previous solution. So uh, the polar thread was gear protected, hence the gear have to jump between the async IO thread and the polar thread. So how the, the solution to solve this is uh, straightforward. So we can make the polar thread only running in the Sizen, written in Sizen, and it doesn't require, uh, and it releases the gears. So it doesn't need any access to any Python object but instead, it, when you receive a core event, you were trying to send a socket, uh, a socket write into async IO space. And the async IO event loop will receive the socket write and be wake up and check the C++ queue to see if, uh, to, to process this core event. And finally, as, as a result, we can see the benchmark uh, between the current API and the async API and the C++ uh, API, and the C++ API. The red, the red one is the current API, the blue one is the async IO API, the gray one is the C++ API. So C++, as you can see, um, the async IO API reaches around 50% of the per core performance of C++, and is two times to 28 times better than the sync stack. Finally, is a status update about the gRPC async IO stack. So it has it have been released. Uh, it has been releasing as experimental API since version one point twenty five, and it passes all the internal tests, which means um, it can communicate well with all the historical version of gRPC and other languages, other gRPC languages. And it's now feature complete with a uh, sync stack. And we are trying to integrate it with uh, Google Cloud Platform clients, and they are expected. To, some of them are expected to release in quarter three of 2020. And you can find API reference on gRPC.io for more information. Thank you. That was my presentation.